So we've got this carby that's uh, leaking fuel. And my guess is it's just a real simple uh, needle valve job. You know, it's just not sealing. And we will find out. That is your main jet. Can you see all this junk here? In fact, you can actually see it's covering the main jet. Have a quick look. There we go. It's sticking on the front. Oh, whoa, I've, I've never seen such a dirty car before. What is going on? A bit of an interjection here. I'm actually editing this video and noticed that I didn't get a close-up of just how bad that carb was. However, I did take a photo for the thumbnail and this is, this is what it looks like. As I said, I've never seen a carb this bad. Maybe you guys have, but uh, yeah, I that haven't. That doesn't smell very nice at all. Let's see if we can even get the... No wonder it was leaking. Take that needle out. Sorry, the lever. Poor little needle. Gosh. Yeah, I've never seen a carb this dirty. Look at all that varnish-sized fuel. It might be better all round just to uh, get the other carb that I've got and put that on there because this is a real state. But yeah, I'm sure it will clean up okay and, and we'll probably get it running, but the time and effort that's required for this is probably not worth it. I'm not interested in getting the ultrasonic cleaner out and going through that whole process if I don't have to. Let's go and get the other carb and see if that looks any better. That nut feels really, in fact, that doesn't, that feels like it's cross-threading almost. Oh no. Doesn't want to come off. That's horrible. Slow and steady. That's just, that feels like it's binding. And if they're both terrible, oh yeah. Mm. If they're both terrible, then we're gonna have to just, there's nothing else I can do. It's just gotta come off. There we go. See if those threads have been chewed up. Yeah, that's horrific too. Completely caked in final size fuel. At least that main jet's not bad. I think they're both gonna get a good drink in the ultrasonic cleaner if I, if I can be completely honest. Oh, at least that comes off. Maybe we'll be able to save that, the O-ring on this one. Okay, well, it, look, it, it, they're going to both get a bath in the ultrasonic cleaner. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I'm going to give it a really good drink. That's a lot, but we need a lot. So we'll put the first one in, or the first bowl float and all that in there. Let that go under. Floats floating, which is a good sign. Do you think we'll be able to tell the difference between the floats when they come out? Or do you think they're going to be indistinguishable? That'll be kind of fun to see. Put that in there. Get our carb. Well, the one with the O-ring on it is the one that's in better condition at the moment, but we'll soon see. Let's see if we can get that one in there too. Fill it up with water. So some of the better quality ultrasonic cleaners come with a degas function. And if yours does, I highly recommend you use it because it's going to improve, drastically improve the uh, cleaning ability of your ultrasonic cleaner. So on this model to degas, I hit the ultrasonic button, or the ultrasonic cleaner button three times. It'll run for five and then turn off for five. You see how they're all coming up to the surface down here? Okay. I'll let that run for about five minutes. If you haven't got a degas function, then run your ultrasonic cleaner for a full cycle 
and that should get rid of most of the gas. Or you can run it for a minute and then physically turn it off for about 10 seconds, run it for a minute, turn it off, do that a few times, get the heat on there. You only have to do this with fresh water if you just put water in. If you're reusing a solution, then you don't have to worry about it. There won't be any um, gas in there. So it's had a couple of cycles. Really nice and, oh, very hot. Well, it's a good sign. Two floating floats. What we'll do, we'll just put the items there individually then we'll wash them off after. All right, let's get these put back together. Uh, as I said, I haven't got an O-ring for that. I don't even think I've got one that will even come close to stretching. No, I don't. So, uh, yes. That one we'll have to go back together without, but uh, I can cut. If, I, if, if that one leaks, I'll buy a pair and I'll put them back together. And then I know I've got two carbs that, that should work. Right, we need to form a gasket here. Now, ideally, hmm, I'd have one to copy. Do I have one to copy? So let's take a piece of paper. <laughs> Dirty finger helps here. There we go. That is what uh, we want for a gasket. Oh, that fly. Give it a tap. My preference for cutting these out is to do it with a knife. Now, for those that don't know, I'm actually a woodworker, and uh, my preference is to actually pivot like this. So I'll show you, and then I'll just speed up the footage so you're not uh, watching this whole thing. So you see, I've got my thumb, I've got the knife in my hand, thumb down, I'm pivoting on it, and I'm twisting. This is, this is the most natural for me, but uh, you can just get a pair of scissors. And if that works for you, I just find that you can't cut tight corners with scissors. So that's why I've taken to this method. And it will be nice and clean. And that is our gasket. We can just clean up that last little bit with some scissors, just where it's a little bit... I mean, it makes no difference, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist here. I think that'll do just fine. Let's have a look on the carb, and we might need to trim it up or change it just slightly. To my eye, that's as good as you're ever gonna get, really. Let me put this one on, recoil on, and we'll see how it runs. I have put two-stroke oil in here, because I've run out, sorry, two-stroke fuel, because I've ran out of unleaded petrol, so uh, it might smoke a touch, but we'll see. Well, the smoke stops, but there's a lot of knocking going on. That sounds like bearing. Oh, that sounds like bearing knock to me. fill you with confidence, does it? Well guys, this app is running and it runs great, except for that knocking. Um, you know, maybe it was run low on oil, then they filled it up with oil because it was full of oil, and then uh, that's why the knocking was there. I don't know. I don't really feel like digging into it. So what I've decided to do, I'm not going to sell it like that. However, I'm going to give it to the owner or the tenant for Katrina's property. I don't think they've got a lawnmower, and uh, they're a bit tight for cash. Well, there we go. I've just dropped it off at the neighbour, and uh, as I said, you win some, you lose some. This one, sadly, I've lost it, and honestly, I don't really want to do any more to it. Like I could stick another new engine on it, but again, it's just, to me, it's not worth it. And uh, that's actually going to stay with that property. He seems really happy because he hasn't got one yet. And uh, it's given me a bit more room. And in the future, I can uh, 
take another mower and we can we can work on it together. But it was good fun. That was such a dirty carb. Man, I'm hot. It's hot today. And uh, the ultrasonic cleaner did a fantastic job. So there we go. That is a little wrap. That engine transplant mower. It is a shame. I think most people would probably just sell it like that. But um, that's not me. If you're buying something from me, it's going to be in great condition. It's going to work. And uh, the most important thing to me is that the customer's happy. I want return customers. I want customers that can trust me. And uh, that's that. So there we go. All right, guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.